Let's uh, bring in Rami Khouri in New York. That's where he's joining us from. He's a senior fellow at the American University of Beirut. Thanks for speaking to us. And back uh, to that tweet that was put out by the Saudi Foreign Ministry, where uh, they said that the kingdom rejects the position expressed recently by uh, the U.S. Senate. Rami, how unprecedented is it that Saudi Arabia uh, criticizes the Senate? Oh, it's quite unusual. Uh, they've had a very close symbiotic relationship, the Saudis and the Americans, for 60, 70 years, and uh, this is highly unusual. They would tend to make any complaints, usually privately, um, and uh, this is uh, a, a, an example of the unprecedented waters that we are entering now when you have the Senate uh, unanimously holding the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia responsible for the murder of Jamal Khashoggi and promising more actions. And with the um, new members of the House of Representatives, a lot of progressive young new members, uh, there's going to be a change in the committee leaderships in the House. There will be a lot more pressure on Saudi Arabia uh, starting after January. So the, we're at the beginning of an, a new era of uh, co contested relationships between the United States and uh, the Saudi Arabian government, with the American president still basically supporting the Saudis, but uh, virtually every other sector of American society, uh, with one or two small exceptions, uh, wanting to have accountability uh, for the murder of Khashoggi and thinking that letting the Saudis continue with their policies internally and regionally, especially regionally, uh, is unacceptable. Yeah, so th this is US a sign president. of uh, more to come. Speaking of the U.S. president, what could be going on right now between the White House and the Saudi leadership? I think the same thing that's been going on for the last uh, year or so. Uh, Jared Kushner is talking to the Crown Prince and other people are talking uh, to each other to figure out how to uh, overcome this crisis and to get back to business uh, as usual. I think what Jared Kushner and, the, and his father-in-law, Donald Trump, don't understand is the same thing that the Saudi leadership doesn't understand, that they cannot just go back to business as usual. The nature, uh, breadth, and continuity of the criticisms publicly of Saudi Arabia and personally of the Crown Prince for the Khashoggi murder uh, is unprecedented, and it reflects a really deep strain uh, in the United States political system of a desire at least to get full accountability for the murder and to hold fully accountable those people uh, who did it. Other things, uh, Qatar, uh, Yemen, uh, Lebanon, uh, Iraq, other issues that the two countries, the U.S. and Saudis, may have uh, uh, differences about will be dealt with separately. But speaking this is the real issues, message that uh, comes out of this. And speaking of other issues, let me put to you something that you recently wrote. You said the tempering of U.S.-Saudi ties and the possible reduced role of Mohammed bin Salman will both weaken the ability of Netanyahu and his extremist zealots in Washington to keep promoting their aggressive apartheid-like policies. So you're clearly drawing a line under the relationship between uh, Saudi Arabia, the U.S., and Israel. Can you explain that? Yes. I think if you look at the region, uh, in the two years almost of the Trump presidency, the Saudi Arabian government is really central to virtually everything that the U.S. is trying to do, whether it's um, uh, hold b push back Iran, promote an Arab-Israeli peace agreement, fight terrorism, uh, promote the continuity of autocratic, non-democratic, and often authoritarian Arab governments. The Saudis are central to what the U.S. wants to do. And the Saudis now have lost a lot of credibility, and they really do not have the respect or the impact in the region or internationally that they used to, other than with those few countries that are so financially dependent for their very survival on Saudi Arabia, like Bahrain and Egypt and a few others, uh, those countries will support anything that Saudi Arabia says. But Saudi, the Saudi government has been weakened diplomatically for the moment, and we'll see how this develops. And therefore, virtually everything the U.S. wants to do is weakened. And the Israeli-Arab peace agreement that Jared Kushner uh, allegedly has been uh, working on um, is central to all of this, and this is probably dead in the water now. And therefore, the United States has to, the government, the presidency has to really rethink uh, whether it should link all its regional ambitions and plans to the Saudi government, which is now badly wounded. All, right. all of these are issues that will become more clear after the new Congress comes into power. All right, Rami Khoury, we thank you for speaking to us from New York.